Yeah, you can see the slide. Okay. Okay, so today, uh, chapter seven supplement, I have uh, changed some of the things in the official slides from the book. So I tried to put in a different way of uh, looking at it. Okay, so this is capacity planning. Uh, so just to remind you about uh, you know operations management when we have uh, operations um, you know in hospitals or in many other places or even in uh, you know uh, this is this is Meiji Jingu sta Stadium you must know very well because uh, you are staying in Japan <laughs> okay so. Uh, I just pick it up from uh, what you call from the internet, okay? But if you look at here, so what is the facts? Uh, what is the so-called capacity? What is the capacity of this stadium? Shu, 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 Shu. Yes. Yeah. Wait. Uh... What? What's the capacity? People. Okay, people. Um, so how many seats it can hold? Uh, okay. Two. So how many seats it can hold? From you know, you just read from that uh, right up. Three. Oh, sorry. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Thirty-seven thousand and nine hundred thirty-three spectators. Sorry. That means the stadium has capacity of holding. Or oh, that means at one point in time, 37,933 people can watch the game, can watch the baseball game. Okay. So this is stadium. Eh? So every operation, every places, you know, we always talk about capacity. Capacity, we will, I will define capacity of this. So what is this? This is... Uh, it's a, it's a Nikkei report, okay? It's, but it's a bit old. Eh? It's 2021, never mind. But it says that uh, Toyota production plans for this fiscal year, 2021, 9.5 million units. So the total capacity for Toyota production which is their factories, they can produce 9.5 million units. Okay, but demand change. Eh? That's why it is important to understand, you know, in universities also, in a small companies, very important about capacity. So we're going to talk about a little bit about capacity and uh, some concepts about bottleneck and theory of constraints. Uh, I'm focused on this. I will focus on break-even analysis and the capacity. That's a little bit, little bit of calculation, okay? Little bit of calculation. The rest is probably, I just mentioned, no, not detail, not too much. Eh? Okay, I focus on capacity, break-even analysis, and bottleneck analysis. So by the end of this chapter, you should be able to define capacity. So if, if you go everywhere, anywhere, if someone asks you what is capacity, then you have an you know you have an idea. You can answer that. And in capacity, especially in production or in corporations, that this terminology is important. Design capacity, effective capacity, and utilization. Okay, we'll see that in a, you know some simple examples. And also we have to perform bottleneck analysis a little bit of calculation also, bottleneck analysis. And we are going to compute break-even analysis. Similar to crossover charts we did last week. If you remember, we did some you know, crossover charts to find the break-even, the meeting point, eh? the total cost equals between uh, option one and option two. Okay. Uh, this one we, I'll just mention, but not not. Uh, I'm not going to uh, you know uh, explain in detail. Now, so capacity. So I I've okay. I forgot to ask you question. Okay, can you read that, uh, Agiko? The first sentence, capacity. Mm -hmm. 
the the throughput or the number of units or facility can hold, receive, store, or produce in a period of time. Yes. Okay. So there is. So this is actually the definition for capacity. Capacity is the throughput. What do you mean by throughput? Ah, Miyoko, any idea? Throughput. Throughput. Hmm. Any idea when you say throughput? I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe. If Toyota has a factory in Nagoya, so the factory is uh, can produce 2,000 units one day. Plan, plan 2,000. So they produce the car. After one hour, they produce like, uh, say, mm, 2,000 divided by, say, 10 hours working. Okay, five hours, five hours. That's it. 200 units. So that 200 units is called the throughput. Once you make it, it's the throughput. Throughput means what it can go out from that uh, facilities. Any, many, many, uh, uh, for example, you know, uh, what do you call uh, bakery? Bakery, making breads. So they have a throughput. Say this, they can produce uh, uh, 2,000 uh, loaves of bread, for example. Okay, so throughput. Can be number of units a facility can hold. For example, that stadium. That stadium just now is the number of units that stadium can hold. It is a capacity. Okay. Uh, so all these are capacity. What can you give one example each of you? Where is Sarah? Sarah Arimas, Arimaska. Hi. Okay, Sarah, give me one example of capacity. You know, define me one place or one uh, situation and tell me how to define the capacity. Um, however, I watch a news right uh, before the class. Uh -huh. and I heard that uh, the North Korea have a hundred of nuclear capacity. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Najina. Okay, okay. All right. You're right, you're right. It, it has that capacity. Yes. Do, do you know this picture? What is this picture? The photo here? What is this photo? Is that... Um, it's uh, like... It's like what? It's a... Musical hall. Musical hall, yeah. It's a concert hall, right? So this also consider as capacity. How many people it can hold. Eh? Okay? So why important capacity... Because capacity actually determines your fixed cost. For example, you make the stadium big, okay? Big stadium, fixed cost. Fixed cost. Fixed cost means you have built the seats, you have built the stand, you know, all these are fixed costs. So if only every time game, only half fill, half fill, <laughs> half full, right? so you are not gaining, you know, you're not paying back for your fixed cost same like factories same factories you know all this uh, yeah, because it determines your fixed cost if you build big then your fixed cost is high but if you build it too small then you cannot meet the demand so so you want to also you know that's why i say determines if demand will be satisfied so it's important capacity because it will uh, make sure whether you can meet the demand or not Okay, demand is coming from the consumer or, you know, people who want to buy your product or go for your service. Okay, right. Uh, so when we plan for capacity, we have these three time horizons. Okay, in any planning, I think I've asked this question before. When we do planning, we have uh, three time zones, three time horizon. Do you still remember? What is the three time horizon when we do any kind of uh, forward planning? Anyone? Anyone remember? Akiko, 
three time horizon. Do you know the three time horizon? Uh, short, middle, long. Ah, uh, right, right, exactly, exactly. Short, mm. short time, short term, middle term, and long term. Okay. So planning over a time horizon normally require this uh, so-called uh, time long range planning intermediate range or medium medium term short range so in operations management anything that is short range we can be covered by scheduling you can do schedule that's why in uh, for for adjusting capacity adjusting capacity mean adjusting our ability to uh, maximize our capacity or do something else to increase the capacity that means we so this part, this orange part, is actually using our capacity. For example, we if we have a production capacity of 100,000, so this is what we can do. We can schedule. So this is uh, short term. So in the medium term, we can use inventory or more training at personnel. So this is increasing the capacity a bit. But we cannot modify the capacity. For example, you cannot increase from 100,000 to say there is additional order of 10,000. We don't have that 10,000 capacity. So we need to actually modify. Okay. So what we do? Well, in the short term, we cannot do, we can only do uh, overtime. Okay. For that, that's why company do overtime. This is just. Uh, very limited option, extra work. <laughs> Every day over time, produce certain amount. But long term, you need to subcontract. Or you add or sell equipment. You add or reduce shift. For example, now you work one shift. You need to work two shifts. For medium term, that is, for example, three months, five months. But 10 years, five years, cannot. We have to design new facilities, new equipment, and, you know, adding extra capacity by new production line, new factory. Okay, so this is the thinking. Thinking is capacity can be modified through, you not know, in the long term and immediate term, but in the short term, very minimum can be done. Eh? Very minimum. That's why we can do subcontracting, or we can do uh, overtime work. Okay. Right. So that is depending on the horizon. So now we move on to defining design and effective capacity. Design capacity, effective capacity. Of course, in, uh, you know, sometimes big factories, there are many machines, many, many, many machines. So, Many machines, it depends on every machine uh, design capacity. Okay. So design capacity is the theoretical output. This is the, you know, theoretical? Theoretical means, Nihongo, uh, Riron Tekini. So, so Riron Tekini, for example, this I buy this machine, manufacturer say, can. Uh, produce 50 items one hour but in reality there are many many issues eh? many problems so that is uh, we call it as uh, effective capacity okay uh, normally especially as a rate is okay for example 50 per, per you know per, per, per day 100 per day and so on okay so effective capacity we need to know this Every machine, every capacity, every plant will have this design capacity. For example, that Meiji Stadium, I don't think it's 39,630 design capacity. Maybe it's more than that. Some of them are actually used for something else, for example, some space. Eh? Okay, that is effective. Effective means the capacity uh, of a, comp a firm expect to achieve given current operating constraints. There are some uh, limitations, some constraints. Normally lower than design. Okay, normally lower than design. Right? 
uh, uh, same thing. Many many things. You know, the the internet say you can download at this speed, <laughs> but but in reality you cannot download at this speed. You need to use five G. <laughs> now four G cannot. Okay. Or there is a video lagging, video or audio lagging. So that is uh, you know reality. Eh? Same in factories. You know, when you make a car, you know we said we can produce two hundred for today. But effective, because operating constraint today, there is uh, well, no supply of parts. So we have to slow down. <laughs> so that is our output, actual output, basically. Okay, we, we will we'll go to that after this. Eh? We'll go to the definition. Eh? So for example, uh, this is given in a book. Okay, but, but what we need this very important is the measurement. Eh? Measurement is very important. How do we measure? We need to have some uh, units to measure. So design capacity, ideal conditions exist during the time that the system is ideal. Okay, Ideal means perfect, no mistakes. So machines at Frito-Lay, Frito-Lay actually makes chips, potato chips, are designed to produce 1,000 bags of chips per hour. And the plant operates 16 hours per day. Okay, so theoretically, theoretically, the design capacity is 16,000 bags a day. Okay, that is uh, um, what what we can you know what is it is designed for. Okay, but of course, uh, this is we we cannot get that now basically. Now, so effective capacity is minus loss output because of plan resource unavailability for example preventive maintenance for example in a day you do some hours of preventive maintenance or even set up set up the machine okay before you start the production you set up or change over change over means new parts come in then you have to wait change over right um so this is this is loss because lost time cannot produce no no production that's why uh, or even schedule breaks there is a you know uh, qk <laughs> okay so he, for example for example frito lay lose 3 hours of output per day okay where where is 3 hours 0 0.5 Maintenance, one hour employee break, one point of hour set up machine. Okay. So what happened is the effective capacity is uh, 16,000 bags per day. So from the previous example just now, okay, minus uh, 1,000 bags per hour, which is three hours per day. Uh, okay, sorry, 1,000 bags per times three hours. So uh, because you can produce 1,000 1, bags per hour, so you lose 3, three hours, so you're losing 3,000 bags. So your, your effective capacity is only 13,000 bags per day. But this is not output yet. Eh? This is only calculating the capacity, effective capacity. Okay. So at the end of the production day, if you have some output, actual output, then you can actually uh, consider some other things. Actual actual output is uh, okay. So the, this is that pretty uh, So this unplanned resource idleness that is planned. Okay, this is unplanned. Absenteeism, uh, machine breakdown, no parts, quality problems. So actual output is, uh, for example, it says one hour. This is exaggerating, eh? this is exaggerating, but it is sometimes uh, reality as well. So the actual output at the end of the day is 12,000 bags per day. Okay, so now you have three numbers, three figures, three numbers, right? One is design capacity, uh, effective capacity. Now you have actual, actual output. But of course, actual output in reality, it is what is being produced at the end of the day. At the end of the day, this is the output, then you calculate that. Okay, that, that is what. So from there, you can actually calculate what we call as utilization. So utilization is 
if if the production line or the machine how many percent utilization so it's given by this formula actual output divided by design capacity okay and uh, another measure we need to determine when you talk about capacity is efficiency efficiency is actual output over effective capacity so this is the percent of effective capacity actually achieved this is the percent of design capacity actually achieved so you see two different kind of concept eh? one is utilization one is efficiency actually for operations we are more interested in efficiency eh? of course design is also important because we need to we can increase ut uh, utilization by the design capacity but of course we do not want the utilization to be low eh? okay let's look at this example uh, please stop me eh? if you you stop please stop me now we go back again so this is a bakery example you can refer it in the book okay uh, it gives some capacity, you know, some uh, numbers. So actual production last week, so this is on a weekly basis, weekly, 148,000 rolls. The company has calculated, this is given, okay, they have calculated and it's given that, you know, the effective capacity is 175,000 rolls and the design capacity is... Uh, 1200 rolls per hour this you need to calculate okay you need to calculate they work seven days a week uh, they work three eight hour shifts okay why don't you open your book and see whether you know, can you can follow, can uh, follow so the design capacity is seven times three times eight times 1200 why because this is how much they can produce an hour this is the number of hours per week working. Number of hours per whole week. Seven days times three shift. Three shift time eight hour for every shift. You know, eight hours. You work eight hours. So 201,600 rolls. That is design capacity. Okay. So, so what is utilization? What is the formula for utilization? Or oh, you calculate utilization now? The answer is in the book, but you calculate. What is the utilization? Utilization means how much actually the, the machine is being used or the design, okay? How much? You, you have a design uh, capacity, but how much is, how many percent is being used, utilized? Okay, what's the formula for utilization? Uh, Mihoko, how to get the answer? Utilization is equals to? Data? Uh, the data. Now, now, now we have hundred and uh, you know actual production output. Mm -hmm. Okay, so actual production. Uh, okay, actual mm -hmm. production utilization. Uh, I just put you is equals to. Mm -hmm. uh, utilization. Uh, utilization what? Actual production mm -hmm. divided design. by design. design. Okay, so actual is hundred and forty-eight thousand. Okay, is thousand and uh, the design capacity. Design is two hundred and one thousand six hundred. Of course, time huh? One one thousand two hundred. Chigo, chigo. Okay, uh, this design. One? So, this one is effective. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Effective. Uh, so design capacity. Uh, one one thousand two hundred dollars per hour or which one? <laughs> okay. Okay, I I, I, <laughs> I, I or this one? Two hundred because okay. One thousand. So this is actually <laughs> Actually, where is the number just now? Okay, never mind. Uh, so thank you. Okay, I repeat again because mm -hmm. uh, this is per hour. 
Ah, pearl. Okay. This is weak. Mm -hmm. So, ah. so yeah, I see. Uh, seven so, days. This. Three shift, shift per day. Ah, I see. Uh, three shift per day. So eight hours shift. Therefore, mm -hmm. seven times three times eight. Seven times ah. three times eight times one thousand two hundred. This is rows. Per week. Per week. Okay. Thank you. Mm, I see. So, <laughs> so utilization is uh, 148,000 divided by 201,600. So that will give us uh, uh, 73.4%. Eh? 73.4%. 73.4%. Eh? Okay. Akiko, Dajo? Mm, yes. Okay. Then you can do for efficiency as well. Same. Only thing is instead of 201, so use effective capacity, then if efficiency is 148,000 divided by 75, you get 84.6%. Okay. Uh, so it is quite efficient, but in terms of utilization, there is, a, you know, what, what we can say is there is a 27% unused capacity. <laughs> yeah, right. This design, eh? design is almost like 26.6% unused utilization. Eh? So that is Okaneo, Taksan Okaneo. What about Okaneo? Every percent is all money, okay? All right. Now we move on. Okay, you can do that. If uh, actual output is 150,000, what is efficiency? So how to calculate efficiency? If actual output is 150,000? Uh, Sarah, if, uh, if uh, actual output is 150,000, so what is the efficiency? What is that? Uh, can you give me a second? Efficiency. Efficiency. Uh, if the actual output is 150,000, what is the efficiency? Efficiency. It, it just give me the number. Okay. E is equals to? Um, 150,000. 150,000 divided by? Divided by, if, wait, efficiency capacity is 175,000. Ah, 175, I, I, 175,000 uh, uh, what do you call effective capacity yes okay right I think you can do this this is quite straightforward eh? so ah uh, so the company now okay let's let's think that they have a new line okay expected output of new line they introduce a new line Okay, uh, so the, the, the design capacity is uh, going to be 403,200 because you have, the, uh, you have actually um, what you call um, add a new line. You add a new a second production line. Okay, second production line with the same capacity. That's why you have this 200,000 times two okay, because of that new production line. And you want to determine the utilization. Uh, the effective capacity is also going to be double because 175 times two. Okay, so this is going to be double as well. You we have two production line. Uh, assuming, assume, eh, okay, that the actual output is, um, uh, okay, this given here expected output of new line is 130,000. So this is the output, right? So if you add this together, that is the output. Uh, so the total output divided by the design capacity is the utilization. So it's, it's just like adding these two divided by this, okay? So it's, so it's by expanding capacity. So you have this uh, effective capacity and the actual output is 278,000 rolls. Uh, and obviously, if you do the same calculation, you get 68.95%. Uh, uh, 
uh, utilization. Just now was how much? Previously, it was 73%. Using one production line is 73% utilization. Having two production line, 68% uh, utilization. Do you want to invest in a new line? Do you want to invest in a line? No. Very, very clear cut. Okay. That's why when you do analysis, anything eh, you do analysis, it is, you know, it's easily being, uh, you know, seen. So this is, you don't want to actually, uh, uh, you need to, you need to do something with the, uh, you know, uh, output, for example, you need to increase the output, for example. Okay. So this is an example of uh, having a, a new line, and you can you can you can do the analysis. You add another line, you know, and so on. Okay, so we move on to uh, capacity and strategy. So now yes, you you can start seeing that you realize that capacity is very important. Capacity is every everything to any organization. Capacity, no capacity. Um, for example, today in uh, COVID, um, many production lines slow down because of no capacity to produce microchips. <laughs> so slow down, no production, car stop. Uh, how to do that? So of course, this is because of disruption. Eh? Disruption. Initially, they think that it can support the supply chain, but it cannot support support the supply chain. Supply chain disrupt. So capacity should impact all transition operation management and all areas. You know, it will affect, uh, uh, for example, production. It will impact, uh, impact quality and so on. So how to effectively and efficiently add capacity? So always the operations manager will always think about how to have more capacity, how to get the parts arrive. <laughs> How to get how get components arrive, eh? and uh, capacity decision must be integrated into the organization mission and strategy. Um, right, so these are the strategies that can be done. Okay, of course the the description is much more than this. Than this forecast demand accurately. So the most important one of the most important is to have accurate demand forecast. We have we have we have seen uh, forecasting in chapter three, right? Forecasting. So you know, forecasting is very important. So you need to have models for that. Uh, that means product uh, addition, product deletion, uh, and so on, and uh, match technology increment and sales volume. So capacity can also be uh, increased through technology. Okay, robots using robot <laughs> technology. And also uh, adjusting through sales volume, playing with the demand. Okay, uh, that can can also uh, utilize unused capacity. Unused capacity uh, can be uh, uh, modified through some uh, what do you call sales volume uh, changes, and finding the optimal operating size, the volume, or you know increase. Uh, the uh, the 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 you no know, the volume eh? find the optimum volume that you can produce or need to have and also flexibility build for change eh? build new facilities so when you talk about operating the optimum eh? optimum so this is uh, just an example just uh, you know concept that um, if if you want to you know uh, produce uh, at this is, is economies of scale actually exist when uh, average cost declines. Okay, this is the average cost. This economy, this is this this economies of scale. That means uh, this is for example retail store uh, average unit cost sales per square foot. This is no not yet economies of scale. So the 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 average unit cost drops until you know this uh, uh, number of square foot in store equals to the average unit cost. So this can be done. Basically, you can you can do the analysis to see uh, which uh, what size 
or what capacity give you the most uh, the cheapest okay and so that is playing with the capacity uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the volume another way is actually to manage uh, manage demand okay so you need to also uh, try to actually uh, think about what to do when this thing this thing happens okay what to do when demand exceeds capacity the do you want to do this when uh, when demand exceed capacity do you want to raise price but, but that is sometimes you need to do right so that is uh, you curtail demand you mean you try to suppress demand by raising the price a little bit so that you can have your capacity eh? okay um to meet that volume so you expect the demand to actually reduce a little bit so this is playing with the demand may you know playing to with the, the demand uh, scheduling longer lead times that means uh, delivery dates uh, is going to be uh, the promise dates is going to be longer like today you know uh, because of shortage of parts uh, so car sales salesmen are promising later dates they cannot promise for example they say one month no no one month two months to deliver the you know uh, your order okay so if demand exceed capacity you you can try to do that or long-term solution the long-term solution if demand exceed capacity increase capacity like what i mentioned just now earlier right you must actually increase the capacity what if capacity exceed demand now you have capacity but your demand is low what do you do uh, this is you know uh, you need to stimulate the market you need to actually have uh, you know sales or you have product changes uh, to meet the to, to change your capacity and do do different products or for for another you know reason to actually adjust to seasonal demand some companies they don't only produce one kind of product for one season they produce many products you know for different kind of seasons for example uh, making shirts i mean japan is lucky because you can make shirts for winter season summer season <laughs> spring season so they can have you know to adjust to the seasonal demands or even uh, uh, honda honda they produce uh, motorcycles they also produce uh, jet skis jet skis that goes on to the you know uh, so they can they can actually have uh, they, they adjust according to the to the seasons okay so that is uh, you know trying to match uh, matching the uh, demand so what's this okay this is uh, the uh, combining products that actually have uh, seasonal patterns okay uh, like i mentioned just now okay i mentioned that uh, like honda for example jet ski engine sales okay this is jet this is snowmobile moto sales so combining the two demand pattern reduces the variation for that factory for example that factory produce both snowmobile and jet ski engine okay so complementary demand patterns for seasonal uh, products okay uh, right. there are many ways to match demand to uh, to match capacity to to demand okay we will see this you know if you if you are in uh, the, the next semester next semester there is one topic which is actually called aggregate planning aggregate planning is a tool that can be used to actually adjust our requirements you know based on uh, demand okay we can we can make staff changes reduce the number of workers but of course there are costs of reducing the workers right so so this these are tactics for matching capacity to demand we can make staff changes we can adjust equipment through purchasing additional machinery or leasing subcontracting 
That's why some electronic, uh, you know, many big manufacturers, they subcontract their products and they don't produce by themselves. Uh, improve process to increase throughput and this is uh, improvement activities if the throughput is very low. If the efficiency is low, then you want to try and increase throughput. If the efficiency, eh, not utilization, utilization is uh, design, the job, design. So if efficiency is the actual divided by the effective so that you can increase the throughput. Redesign product to facilitate more throughput, adding process facility or closing facility. Close is also another option. Close facility. I mean, I cannot meet the, uh, what do you call, uh, the demand. Not to meet demand. The, the capacity is uh, too small. Okay, the demand is too small. The capacity is big. So you, you might as well close down. Like what is happening in COVID today? Some Many shops are closed or even retail shops are closed because there's no, there's no demand, right? In, uh, in, in New York, in London, uh, all the retails are actually closed. Why open? <laughs> well, demand, no demand. Huh? Right. So this is... Uh, so for service sector, okay, there you can actually have uh, demand management. That means you don't... You, you do appointment system, reservation or first come, first soon, so service sector, eh? or they have capacity management uh, uh, in terms of uh, how, you know, employing full-time or temporary staff or part-time staff. So they, it depends on their demand, eh? or they, they, they manipulate the demand, they manipulate. For example, airlines, they manipulate the demand. They give you very cheap price, for some people, some people get very cheap price, some people get expensive, okay? That is capacity, uh, uh, that is demand management and capacity management. Okay, I'm not going to talk more on this. Eh? Um, so we move on to uh, bottleneck analysis and uh, the theory of constraints. Now, um, so this is now very smaller, narrow, narrower, and also very specific to very, for example, one department or a few processes, okay, few, few processes. Uh, so each work area will have its own unique capacity. Yeah, that's obvious, okay. Uh, even, you know, for example, universities, universities have classrooms, classrooms. So classroom also you have capacity how many to put in the class, how many lecturers. So that is also, you know, it's unique capacity. 10 classrooms, uh, 20 lectures, how many people? So it's also, you know, uh, how to make sure there is no bottleneck. Eh? So we do capacity analysis. So it's called capacity analysis. analysis. Uh, to determine the throughput capacity of workstations in a system. So in our analysis here, we have workstations, okay, workstations. So we want to look at uh, whether works this workstation, there is a bottleneck or not. So a bottleneck is the limiting factor or constraint, whereby the bottleneck has lowest effective capacity. So each machine, you can actually determine the effective capacity. Right, uh, because it depends on you know how fast it can work. Every you know every machine has that, and the time to produce a unit is called the process time. Okay, so we have capacity uh, bottleneck and process time. So we want to look at this bottleneck analysis. Eh? So uh, the technique is bottleneck analysis. Um, and another, another thing is the bottleneck time. So the bottleneck time is defined as the time of the slowest workstation. Okay. That means the one that takes the longest in the production system. So for example, the first stage, first step, it requires uh, two minutes per unit. That means I can do the job two minutes and I pass to the next person. No, this is inventory actually. Yeah. This is inventory. So B, for example, four minutes per unit. C is three minutes per unit. 
So the throughput time is the time it takes a unit, one unit to go through this uh, production. This is maybe one part only, just very to simplify, okay, to make it simple. Three steps. That means from start to end with no waiting. Okay, with no waiting, what is the uh, throughput time? So in this case, uh, you need uh, seven minutes to actually do this. Eh? No waiting, uh, two plus four plus three, then only you complete one minute, one unit. Eh? Okay, right. So I want to uh, explain, this is uh, capacity analysis for parallel processes. Imagine, can you understand this? This is uh, the first, so it works from right, from left to right, okay, from left to right. Order, 30 second per sandwich. This, this is the first assembly line. The top here is actually the first assembly line. This is the second assembly line, okay? So order, so the bread, 50 seconds per sandwich, fill, toaster. This is one kind of bread. This is another kind of bread. Or it's uh, probably the same bread because it's uh, having the same time, okay? So, so 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 40 seconds, and the delivery, okay? Uh, so lines have two workers, two workers, first worker here. Okay, line have two workers. Uh, all right, two workers and uh, three operations. Well, it's a bit funny because the rep should have another worker. <laughs> because the rep should also have another worker. Anyway, so the two lines are identical. So parallel processing can occur. At 40 seconds, the toaster has the longest processing time. So the bottleneck for this process, you know, for this process is this toaster, right? So this toaster is actually uh, taking, uh, is longest, okay? It's the longest. So uh, at 30 seconds for two sandwiches, the bottom time, bottleneck time of the combined line is actually 20 seconds, okay? Uh, at 35.75 seconds, wrapping and delivery, is the bottleneck for the entire operation. So look at this example. Right. Uh, so this 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 shows that there is uh, the uh, uh, the bottleneck for the for this uh, parallel process. Right? You understand? Any questions? Do you can you see where that this is uh, uh, the 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 bottleneck means the the process in which it is the slowest? Okay. Mm. So for throughput time, so each assembly line is identical. So the tot is just the sum of the process time for all the five operations. So the the explanation of this. Let me see. Okay, all right. So it's given that the capacity per hour is actually 3,600 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds. Uh, divided by 37 seconds, you will get 90, 90, 96 sandwiches per hour. And the throughput time is. Uh, 30 plus 15 plus 20 plus 40 plus 37.5. Okay, which is actually 142.5 seconds. All right. So to actually to complete uh, one completed uh, sandwich is actually 142.5 seconds. That's the throughput time. Uh, Any questions? Any questions? So, um, can you show the throughout the explanation of the throughout time? Because I, um, I don't know. Throughput time. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. 
So throughput time is the time taken from start, start until to, the end. to finish to the end. Uh, so, so the it is, is it is uh, from order. Okay, until end. So if you look at the first line, is 30 plus 15 seconds, plus 20 seconds, 40. plus 40 seconds, plus 37.5 seconds. I see. It's actually the same. Down also is actually the same processing time. A new line also will give you the same uh, throughput time. Throughput time. Okay. To complete, to make one... Sandwich. Yeah, one sandwich. unit of sandwich. Yeah, yeah one yeah. unit of sandwich. sandwich. It will uh, require hundred and forty two point five seconds. Okay, hundred forty two point five seconds. Um, right. So thirty plus fifteen plus twenty plus forty plus thirty seven point five. Um, only thing is, I was wondering. The capacity per hour is 37.5 seconds. Okay. Right. So that is for parallel process. For simultaneous process, okay. Uh, the book gives example about this dentistry process, dentistry uh, cleaning and examining the teeth. Uh, standard process for cleaning to clean, examine x-rays can happen simultaneously. That means uh, this, these, two, these two steps uh, can be done uh, simultaneously because not everyone uh, will have to actually do, do this. Okay. Um, so the process for basic dental is uh, the customer will check in two minutes and then they will uh, take x-ray two minutes and then develop the x-ray four minutes and uh, the, the cleaning and the x-ray examination is being done simultaneously okay at the same time by the dentist and or not dentist by the person who actually do this and will go to the dentist eight minutes and then check out. Eh? Uh, so when uh, when you have simultaneous process, it's actually being uh, split. Okay, so the, what is the total time actually to complete this uh, simultaneous, uh, this process? How long, what is the throughput? What's the throughput? How to, uh, how long does it take actually? Four to six minutes. Okay, so where do you get 46 minutes? Um, two minute plus, two minute plus, four minute plus, and 24 minute plus because the x-ray exam is, is sitting in, is parallel. It, it, at the same time. Uh, same time, two, four, eight, 32, 40, 66. So, so you don't count this five, right? Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, the... Uh, so the, the, the capacity that for this uh, process is uh, 26 minutes, okay? Um, right. So all possible paths must be compared, okay? Bottleneck is the hygiene, so so actually, the, this example is trying to show that this uh, this process here, twenty four minutes, is actually the bottleneck. Okay, so the bottleneck. So the hourly capacity is actually uh, determined by this sixty divided by uh, twenty four is actually two point five patients that you can actually process or you can serve. Um, the X-ray examination pass is twenty-seven minutes. The cleaning pass is forty-six minutes, because uh, of course, uh, you know. so so basically, if I can reduce this, okay, if I can reduce this, I can actually um, make the process uh, faster, okay, because of this bottleneck. So if the process can be, you know. Can, can, if I can reduce 34 minutes, that will go actually make the process uh, 
uh, faster. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, I, I suggest that you go to the example S4 in the, uh, you know, in the text for you to, you know, uh, get a clear picture of the, uh, the example just now. Okay, there is this theory of constraints. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to explain this. Okay, this is a bit, um, a bit, uh, what do you call, it? need a lot of time to explain that. Okay, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to uh, go into break even analysis. So do you want to take a five minute break? It's almost like six o'clock for you. Take a five minute break. Okay, take five. And after that, okay. Um, all right. Um, so I'm going to uh, explain about break even analysis. Okay. So this is um, is related to capacity, you know, uh, determining your capacity. So this is actually a good tool to determine the capacity of a facility, to evaluate process and equipment alternatives. So many things, many things you can actually do this break even analysis. So the objective is to find the point in dollars and units in which cost equals revenue. So we want to actually determine um, you know, the break even between our uh, revenue or income against cost. So in break-even analysis, we need estimation of fixed costs, variable costs, and revenue. Okay, so we need estimation. We need some values, some numbers for that. If not, you will not be able. You know, you won't be able to do the analysis or the calculation. So fixed costs is very straightforward. Okay, fixed costs are costs that continue even if no units are produced, depreciation, taxes, debt, mortgage payments, and so on. Okay, or even buying the equipment, eh? fixed costs. Uh, you know, this, the, the classroom are still there. So if you don't use it, then you're going to actually um, not get any gains and eh? no benefits. Whereas variable costs are costs that vary with the volume of units produced. Labor costs, materials, some portion of utilities, and normally we talk about contribution. Contribution is the difference between selling price and variable cost. Okay, so if you know the contribution, then uh, we can actually uh, de determine our volume. So in break-even analysis, the revenue function or the revenue line, eh, revenue line begins at the origin and proceed upward to the right. So it's actually it's like this, okay? So revenue line, revenue line is, this is, uh, for example, dollars, this is quantity. So of course, if I sell at $5 per unit, then obviously this is the, this is the revenue line, okay? Revenue function, uh, increasing by the selling price of unit. So when the revenue function crosses the total cost line, so you need to have some, total cost line okay i will show you after this this is say this is the total cost right so the the break even is actually this point here where total cost equals revenue so you want to know what is q q star or whatever you want to call it so it's like this this is total fixed cost variable cost uh, variable cost also depends on the pieces right the units so if it is cost us um, you know one unit to produce cost us five uh, five dollars or 100 yen then that is multiplied by the quantity that we produce or we want to actually make eh, when to make fixed cost is uh, you know your investment and so on so this is the total revenue line 
uh, we call it this is as the loss corridor. This is the loss corridor, meaning any volume less than this is actually no revenue, no no income, no 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 profit. Sorry, no profit. This is profit corridor. So even anything beyond this uh, Q, okay, break even point, then you want to, uh, you you know that you're making profit. So it's very useful, huh? very useful. This is, um, you know, for example, if you want to organize um, a seminar, seminar for or a short course training. So there is, you invite people. So there is cost for printing the notes, you know, um, food, for example. But the fixed cost is the, the uh, trainer's fees. Fees is fixed. If you pay 1,000 ringgit or, or let's say 10,000 yen. So if 5% uh, come, same, 30, 000, uh, 30 people come also, same, fixed cost, same. Okay, but variable cost, 5%, you know, five, uh, five lunch. 10% 10 lunch. So 10 lunch is more costlier than, than five lunch. Okay, so this is, you can do this for all, for anything. I have done use for many, my projects or whatever. But assumption, even though it is not, uh, not real, for example, cost and revenue are linear function, straight line, linear, okay? Uh, in generally not, not true in the real world. But we this is the best, you know. Sometimes we need to assume uh, we cannot assume not straight line. <laughs> How much you want to assume? Okay, so that's the best assumption. Assumption we actually know this cause. Of course, it's very difficult to verify exactly, but this still, you know, there are um these are assumptions assumption and time value of money is it not okay? Time value means uh, inflation and so on, okay, or interest rates. So no, no. So this are ignored. Now, this is a bit, um, there's too much formula here, but don't worry, okay? Uh, so this is B, it's called break even point in units. So that's why it is X here. So BEP is just the short form, break even point for X. X is the number of units produced. So X is the quantity. BEP dollar sign is break even point in dollars. Okay, so you can you can actually determine both uh, break even for units and dollars, and you need P, which is the price per unit, and we assume after all discounts. Okay, I mean the net price. TR is T times R total revenue, not not T times R, P times X. What is P? Price. What is X? P times X. So, for example, I make five, 500, one is 10. So, my revenue, uh, I sell it, eh? I sell it at 10. I make uh, 10, the revenue is 100, okay? Fixed cost is fixed, some number, okay? For example, if I invest uh, 100,000, uh, then that is my fixed cost. And you need to find variable cost per unit, VC, a uh, V here. So, total cost is fixed, plus Vx, V is variable cost per unit, X is number of units produced, or number of units, uh, you know, yeah, produced and sold, okay? So the break-even point occur when total revenue is equal to total cost. Total revenue is equal to total cost, or Px equals to F plus Vx, therefore, uh, just formula, just for, remember this formula. You don't, you don't have to derive this. So this, you only understand big even point for X is fixed cost divided by uh, price minus uh, variable cost, which is contribution actually. Eh? If you notice earlier, this is in accounting. Same thing, you learn accounting the same. If you have studied accounting, you must know contribution. Contribution is price minus variable cost. Eh? So we look at example. Uh, okay, before that, eh, before that, you can also determine uh, the 
price, the break-even price, okay, break-even price is given by this formula, okay, fix cost divided by one minus B divided by P, and of course profit, and profit is total revenue minus total cost. Profit is contribution. This is contribution times X quantity. How much is how many you sold minus fixed cost. Understand? So profit uh, is uh, how much we make minus our fixed cost. Look, look. We will look at example. Uh, then only you can you can relate this. Fixed cost is given. This is given. Okay, the, the, it's an example is given in the book. The company. Uh, has invested 10,000. So this is the fixed cost, invested 10,000. They are producing uh, some products. So the material cost is 75 cents per unit. Their direct labor is $1.50 per unit. So their, their variable cost is material plus direct labor. It's actually 2.25, okay, which is this, eh? 2.25. Selling price, $4 per unit. Of course, if the selling price is less than the variable price, then you're not making money. <laughs> Your sale at four. Your cost is two uh, is four. So zero. No, no contribution. So no, don't make the product. Why you want to make the product? You understand? If uh, if the variable cost is uh, you know and the, the selling price is the same. Eh? So BEP dollar is F divided by one minus V divided by P. So you will have 10,000 divided by one minus the sum of 1.5 plus 7, 0.75 divided by four. Okay, 1.5, which is actually, this is the variable cost divided by fixed cost. For, uh, sorry, price, price eh? divided by price. So in term of dollar, the break even is actually at $22,857, okay? So be, be, below that, you're actually making loss. Remember that profit corridor, profit corridor and loss corridor. Loss means no money, eh? make loss. So the break even point for X is uh, F divided by P minus B, which is 5,714 units or pieces of products, okay? We can show that uh, in the graph actually. So how to get this graph? So just multiply, 2000 multiplied by uh, four, four ringgit, uh, $4. So this is actually 8,000, eh? okay? 8,000 point, so that's why it's less than 10,000. Fixed cost, fixed cost is 10,000. So this red line is, uh, is fixed cost. So this is revenue. This is uh, total cost. Okay, total cost is actually just a variable cost. This is variable cost plus, eh, plus fixed cost, right? If you make nothing, what is your variable cost? Uh, Sarah, if I don't make anything, what is my variable cost? If you don't make anything, yeah, what is your variable zero. cost? Zero. <laughs> yeah, zero. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay, but here because we have a 10,000, so zero plus 10,000. That's why it is the, uh, this is the total cost. Total cost curve is actually fixed plus variable. Okay. If I make 10,000, my total cost is uh, 10,000 plus. 10,000 times what? 2.25 kah? Variable cost, eh? Variable cost. Okay. Since ah, now I can finish my lecture today. <laughs> I want you to, uh, I stop here and I want you to actually uh, try. This is actually S7.17. I want you to try to solve this now. Now. Do it now. Take out a piece of paper and uh, uh, try to do it now. If you have questions, uh, you no. Know, after ten minutes, I will ask uh, someone to explain the. Uh, give me the answer or explain to me how. Hi, hey, Mihoko.
Any yes. question? Any question? So you have solved the Nothing. problem? Yeah. Okay. I finished this. Uh, Compute. Which, uh, I mean, it's comp you have <laughs> computing this. You have calculator. Okay. So what is the answer for A? Uh, okay. A. a uh, what is the break? 125,000. 125,000. Mm. Mm. Is that no? That break even point. Uh, what what the others? Uh, anyone else got the answer for A? Uh, in my answer, my answer is 6,250. Okay, Mihoko, you got 12,000. Okay, Sarah got 6,250. Okay. What about the rest? My answer is uh, same with Sarah. Ah, 6,000 sounds same with Sarah. Akiko? Yes. Ah, Mihoko. <laughs> same? 6,250? 6250, yes, yes. Yeah, the correct answer is 6250. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's okay, well, let's, let's ask the second, uh, what is the break even for proposal B? Who got any answer? 7000. 7000, Sarah, okay. Uh, Miyoko? No, not 7000? Yes. Seven, ah, 7,000. 7, 7, Zoo? Zoo? 7,000. Okay. Akiko? Yeah, the same. 7,000. 7, okay. So the first one is uh, because, okay, so since the first one, uh, I'll just show for A, okay? Uh, so for A, total revenue is equals to total cost. Okay, I'll just... Uh, uh, make it very simple. 20 X is equals to fixed cost is 50,000 plus 12 12 X. Okay. X is quantity. So 20 X 12 X. So minus this 8 X is equals to 50,000 Nagara X was 6,250. Right, Akiko. Very simple. <laughs> simple uh, no, calculation. Same thing for B, okay? Right, anyway, I think uh, maybe, you know, the, at the end of the chapter, there are other questions that you probably want to go through. This is quite straightforward, but I think you, you understand the concept if you, you know, able to answer that. Uh, this is a case of multi-product. Multi-product is a bit complicated, but uh, these are formulas. Multi-product, uh, you know, same thing. Only thing is you have uh, many uh, uh, items, and you need to do the you know uh, total cost for different between sandwich and drink, and between uh, you know big big potato. So you can actually, you can use a break even point for dollars in this case, okay? Um, total income or total revenue based on this uh, variable cost, this variable cost, this is selling price, this is volume, okay? So they, they use dollars actually, they use dollars, okay? Right. So you can use this too. Now, uh, just a little bit about uh, when when we when we want to change our capacity. Okay, there are many ways of changing capacity. Okay, because this is this is a different topic and it's not about break even anymore. It's actually how to reduce risk with incremental changes of our capacity. There is four way. Four ways. One is uh, leading demand with incremental expansion. If there is expected demand to increase, so you in in the first when you say leading demand mean you increase the capacity early, 
okay, before the capacity, before the demand actually increase. So new capacity is installed, uh, for example, at this month, okay, this month. A new, new capacity installed at this month. So this is leading demand. Uh, but very slow step. Eh? Compared to B, leading demand, one step expansion. That means, you know, this is, for example, one to three months. So you, you increase a lot. So new capacity to cater for this two time periods. Okay. So this is uh, leading demand with one step expansion. This is incremental expansion. Uh, so this leading, I mean, when the demand, uh, before the demand actually uh, increase, you already increase the capacity. For the third case, lagging demand. Lagging demand is you don't increase the capacity. You just, uh, you know, let the, you, you produce be, you know, your below capacity. You wait until you cannot meet the capacity, then you increase the capacity. The new capacity is lagging behind the demand lagging behind okay so this is uh, lagging demand with incremental expansion this is average capacity with incremental expansion that means you increase the new capacity but not full only average half half okay to meet the expected demand so because it's sometimes very costly sometimes it's very uh, once you increase the capacity they cannot return back. You build new capacity means you have new machines, new factories. So you cannot uh, retract back. You cannot uh, return back to the, uh, you know, the, to the low, low capacity uh, volume, right? So this is just uh, reducing risk with incremental change to, uh, to, um, to react to your capacity. Okay, to react to your, uh, I mean, uh, to react to your demand, actually, to react to demand. What do you do with the, you know, how to introduce new capacity? Either you introduce new capacity incremental or one big step, or you don't lead, you're lagging behind. You lag. Lagging means you wait for, you know, capacity and until you cannot meet the capacity, then only you expect, or you introduce the new capacity. In C here, eh? in C is lagging, lagging demand, eh? right? Any questions? Or, you know, if you want to do more detail on uh, the analysis of the capacity, uh, this is, this is uh, the same thing I explained just now, eh? okay? Um, or you can use some uh, probabilistic, probabilistic uh, model to determine your capacity decision expected monetary value to capacity decision okay so you can use some uh, what do you call expected monetary value when you invest in large plan of course the the investment is big smaller plan so there are there are different decision do nothing okay do nothing so no monetary return Small plan, medium plan, large plan. So this is a mathematical model of trying to actually compare between, you know, uh, capacity expansion. Okay. So there are mathematical models as well. No? Uh, right. Hmm. So operations managers must have to this may have to decide among various financial options, and they have to analyze capacity alternative. Okay. There are many costs. Uh, or even um, um, analysis, okay, cash flow analysis, net present value. You see a lot of this in accounting, okay. But any investment will have to have seen this before. Have you seen net present value, future value? I, you must seen this before. This is actually in uh, economics, right? So you want to invest. What is the future value and what is your net present value so you want to make decision or return on investment for example roi so those are uh, measures that can be used to make sure whether it is um, it's worthwhile to invest or not it's worthwhile to buy the machine or not okay so that you can uh, what is the net present value for your um, for your investment eh? okay 
No, I'm not going to explain this. Does it have entity and all this? Okay, that's that's I'm I'm stopping here. Actually, this is just I'm showing you, but uh, this is where actually I want to stop. Okay, is actually this uh, this this uh, reducing risk with uh, different kind of strategies, different kind of strategies, average, lagging, or uh, leading uh, strategies. Okay. Any questions, Sarah? Any questions? So far, so good. So far, so good. Mihoko, Nanika. Yeah. Uh, hi. It's about uh, take even analysis. Mm -hmm. We normally uh, count it um, as uh, yen, means dollars. Yes. So uh, this time, count, uh, uh, we count units. So. <laughs> Ah, yen. Yen is mm. Korean. Eh? Uh, yeah, yen. normally okay. we So we use change this that. to yen. Korea change mm -hmm. to yen. Yeah. So they were Korean symbol. Like you. <laughs> mm? This is only symbol, money symbol. Some money mm -hmm. symbol. Yeah, money. yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. This time, dollars, but um, uh, actually. Ah, the... you always use money to yeah, you need Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. sometimes you give us um you need to also question units with uh, units. So <laughs> no no sometimes so. we need to analyze based on units. Oh sometimes okay. Sometimes we need to analyze based on units. Uh mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes easier to visualize in terms of uh units, the job. Mm -hmm. So units uh Units uh, cost for coconut. This is cost. Mm. Uh, I know this is uh, revenue. Eh? Tabun uh, revenue. Eh? Mm. So revenue, we can actually. But we want to know quantity. Quantity. Beef below this, no money. Mm. Below this, uh, no loss, no mm. profit. Mm -hmm. Above this, that means any mm -hmm. volume after this mm -hmm. break even quantity, profit corridor. Profit yeah. corridor. Mm. Right. So sometimes you need to use unit for easier understanding. Yeah, right. Probably. Okay. How many we should sell or something? Nah, yes, mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. Some I units understand. you sell. Then mm -hmm. uh, after that, it's uh, profit already. Before mm -hmm. this, below is no profit. Mm. Mm. I see. Hey. Mm. ありがとうございます。Any other Any questions? No, okay. But you have questions to solve, okay? I know you uh you you have exercise S7.6 and S7.12 if I'm not mistaken. I've uh, corrected in the OMG. Okay. So so Raishu, next week we have uh, next week you complete your case study ne? no no lecture ne? you not le lecture you have to do your case study in the class bring your case study and complete the case study maybe next the renaissance eh? renaissance case study make into powerpoint okay also okay no need long report ne? maybe you do not know how to write a lot of report but powerpoint only maybe also again acceptable for the second case study I understand. So for second say study, no need for full write up, just PowerPoints, slides. It's okay. Miss Sarah, what are you? I got it, but do so. Uh, if you write, it's it's also okay. I mean, uh, it's up to you. It uh, I I just give all you know for you to op open choice, uh... choice, choice. Uh, report also Daijobu, PowerPoint mm. more Daijobu, so that can be submitted both ways. Mm. Actually, um, last time was the first time to write down my case study report, mm -hmm. but there was no feedback about it, so I don't know ah. my our report was good or bad or improving mm. points, so um, 
So okay, so okay. You want to report on that? I I will I will uh, give a very brief uh, remarks only. I okay. will give a brief remarks for the first report. Yeah. Okay. Before by next week, I will you know give you a brief report. Brief next review. week, but the deadline of the second report or the PowerPoint is next week, right? It so be. no, I you have improve. because there's you no know, the time in the class can be used to actually complete the case study. Ah, I see. Because next week there is complete the case study in the class. Ah, uh, in the class. Yeah, it's in the ah, class. I see. Okay. Thank uh, you. Complete the case study in the class because you know, but I'll be here in the class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, sorry, I can't find uh assignment page. Assignment page uh, S7.6 and set S7.12. 7.6 means 7.6. This one? Sure. Uh, 7.6 and 7.12. 7.6? Ah, I see. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, why I, I couldn't find it <laughs> in the textbook it says in textbook only thing yeah. in my meiji oh meiji i've corrected it because last yeah. time it cannot be seen eh? uh, akiko mm. cannot see the number i've already uh, sent and upload the the new one okay ah, i see yeah thank you very much yeah, yeah i no can problem. understand yeah okay all right so i will see you next